little disclaimer I have to read. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Carrie Sincule, and I started a yoga delivery company called Yoga Zark. Yoga Zark wants to put your health first, and yoga is an activity that requires physical exertion. Please ensure you are in the proper shape to do yoga, and if you are unsure or have an existing medical condition, please consult your doctor or physician before beginning a yoga regimen. Second, we got to read our angel card and see what our angel card says. Our angel card choice of the day for a little inspiration is the angel of wisdom. Through my connection with infinite wisdom, all becomes possible. All that exists flows from the source of divine wisdom. Wisdom emerges in the heart that has opened itself. We transform attachments and doubts into the certainty that we have and know all we need when we tune into the soul. It is possible to have knowledge and know wisdom. Wisdom is a pure quality that comes from the spirit, inspiring loving attitudes and creating abundance moment by moment. A little wisdom to inspire you through this time. We'll start standing. For those of you that are not comfortable getting on the floor, don't worry. If you follow me, I will make that a comfortable practice for you. We have to learn to get down on the floor. That is the best fall prevention as we grow older. Ankle flexibility, keeping our body strong, and making sure that you feel comfortable getting on the floor. So all of that happens in yoga, which is beautiful. So whether you're seated or standing, and if any of you like to sit on your mat or in a chair, we'll start with breathing. We always wanna start with breathing in yoga. We're gonna start with breathing our full three-part breaths, okay? Front of your mat, in your chair, wherever you are, sitting nice and tall. So I'm pressing through all four corners of my feet. So it's the balls of your feet, the big toe, and under the pinky toe pressing, and the heel. So you can think of the middle of your heel or the sides of your heels, but make sure all of those points are pressing. Your feet can be together or hip width apart. You want to use your thigh muscles to lift your kneecaps without locking. Draw your tailbone towards down, your hip points up, and that helps open the front body. When we sit in chairs, we need to create space here. Rolling your shoulders back, lower ribs draw down, and that creates a nice stance. Anytime you're standing somewhere and you think of it, practice this posture. Our three-part breath, find a focus point or close your eyes. Fill your belly, your ribs, all the way to your shoulders with breath. Four to five counts in and as you exhale through the nose, emptying from the shoulders, the ribs, the belly. And let's do this for about one minute. And start to check in with your body from head to toe. Notice how you're feeling right now with the body you have right now. Wisdom is listening to your body the card of the day, the angel of the day. Belly, ribs, shoulders. Shoulders, ribs, belly. Three more, three part breaths, four to five counts in. It's rare we fill our full lungs with breath because we're not thinking about it. So anytime you think about breathing, breathe. Two more full breaths. We'll start with sun or continue with sun salutations. Half to start. Inhale, reaching your arms up. And as I reach my arms up, I keep my shoulders away from my ears. I gaze up. And as I exhale, I bend my knees to get my shoulders out of the way. And as I bend my knees and fold over my legs, I let my belly come on my thighs. I might walk my feet wider. And I tuck my forehead all the way in. Let my spine grow long. Notice how much I have to bend my knees for my hamstrings starting out. It's okay to bend your knees to give your hamstrings space for your spine. From here, bring your hands to your shins. 
We extend our spine when we inhale. So lengthen as you inhale. Notice I'm extending, keeping the neck long, front and back. And as I exhale, I fold back down again. Press through both feet, all corners. Reach your arms back out. Inhale your way to stand up. Use your core muscles and exhale. Bring your hands to your heart. Muscles here below the belly button above, pulling them in, supporting your back. As you inhale, reach. We call them bandhas in yoga. Exhale, bend your knees and fold. Tuck your forehead. Inhale, extend your spine. Bring your hands to your shins to help you. Exhale, fold in half. Press through the four corners of your feet. Reach to stand. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Let's do one more half sun salutation A. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, get long in your spine. Exhale, fold again. Inhale, reach to stand. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart and then open them by your side. Let's add some side bends. I'll turn, mirror image you use. So I press through all four corners, my feet either together, hip width apart, inhale, reach your arms up. So I'm mirror imaging you, your right arm comes down, look over your shoulder and lift up and over. And as you inhale, come up, take your left hand down, right arm, exhale, up and over, side bends. Any side bend variation, for those of you that practice regularly, if you have a different one, please use it. Inhale, reach your arms up, look up. As you exhale, again, coming back to the front of my mat, seeing from me from the side, hinging so that your spine is protected and supported on the way down. Inhale, extending your spine. And now our full sun salutation, we bend the knees a little more. Hands come down and walk your feet back to get to your knees. This is tabletop position. Your first option here for sun salutation is to do a cat cat. Your second option is to walk your knees back. For those of you that flow regularly, Take the next few minutes and do five to 10 sun salutation A's your way. Letting your hips drop. Now notice that my hands are below my chest. My shoulders are a little forward. I feel like I'm gonna fall on my head. That's how you know you're doing it right. Then I puff into my back to support, draw my tailbone under, and I bend my elbows to come down, building strength in my core, my triceps. Now dropping my hips, Keep my elbows bent. I roll my shoulders open. I look up. I lift my heart. And this cobra pose is great if we sit a lot because it's the opposite of what we do in chairs. Now our downward facing dog. First option is to lift to push back to tabletop and then make your way to your forward fold front of your mat. That's an option. We can shift to child's pose as another option instead of downward facing dog. Downward facing dog, we're still shifting back tucking our toes, use all the muscles below and above the belly button to pull in and up and back. Now here, I'm still keeping my knees bent. I'm keeping my heels lifted so that I can press through and stretch my upper body too. I let my neck roll long, my ears come past my biceps a little bit. Notice I'm spreading my fingers super wide to protect my wrists. And as I warm up more, then I'll be able to lengthen my legs more. We've done about five full breaths is what we want here. And now take your way to the front of the mat. Walking your way towards your, and you can even bring your hands back to your feet too. Inhale, extend your spine. Exhale, fold over your legs. Squeeze between your shoulders, stand all the way up, inhaling. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Inhale, we repeat this a few times, so let's do it. Inhale, reach, bend your knees and fold. I'm taking my feet a little wide to help support me because my body is super tight. Inhale, extend. 
exhale, pick your cat cow or your push up. For those of you that want to change your push up, you practice something different, your toes or anything else. Lower, inhale, open, cobra. Exhale, use your core to push up and back. Five breaths, downward facing dog. Full four to five counts in and out. This is such a great exercise, these sun salutations. If you just spent 15 minutes a day doing some sun salutations, your body will thank you for it. That's wisdom right there. And now again to the front of your mat. For those of you that are surprised when I say I'm tight, I was a group fitness instructor for 25 years and really damaged my body. Exhale, fold. So I use yoga to recover. Inhale, reach. Exhale, hands to your heart. Inhale, reach. I'll be doing some practices for connective tissue recovery later this week. That'll be great. Exhale, okay, back on focus. I do this all the time. For those of you that take my classes live, you know I get off track all the time. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale. That's why I practice yoga. Pick your push up or your cat cow, exhaling as you lower. Inhale, your back bend. Exhale, use your core, push back, downward facing dog. Five full breaths, three part breath. Notice my hamstrings are getting a little straighter. One more breath here. Look up into the front of your mat. Inhale, extend. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach. Exhale, your hands to heart. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold over your legs. Getting all this movement and lubrication to our spine, our joints. Inhale, extend. Exhale, bend to walk back. Take your as many breaths as you need to to prepare to take your exhale down in a push up or your cat cow. Inhale to your cobra. Open the front body, so good for us. Exhaling, downward dog. Breathe. This is a great warm up. We'll do one more full sun salutation, A. Come to the front of your mat. Lengthen. Fold. Reach. Inhale, reach. Now, if you were in a chair, as you exhale, you can fold, put your hands on the seat of the chair and do it standing, right? If I, if I had a chair here, then I could inhale, take a half lift. I could exhale, I could fold. You can do your lengthen instead of your push-up. I'm going to walk back into my push-up, but you can make it work from a chair. The important thing is you're just moving, right? And you're breathing instead of just sitting still. Inhale, lengthen. I'll make sure to get a chair yoga class, a yoga with a chair class, I like to call it, in the next few weeks too. Two more breaths. Okay, and making our way to the front of our mat to move on. Inhale, extend, exhale, fold. All the way up, hands to heart. We hear about, I'm gonna grab a sip of water while I talk. We hear about chair pose a lot, moving on to sun salutation B, learning chair pose. And chair pose really is not chair pose. It's actually called fierce pose. Sitting in chairs, is a lot easier than holding this shape, which is why it's important we call it fierce pose or utkatasana is what we call it in Sanskrit. So 
So you bring your big toes together, your heels a little bit apart, and that's not necessary. If you're starting this practice and it feels better to sit back with your feet hip width apart, start there. Think of this like sitting more on a bar stool. So we're not sitting super low, so we keep the extension in our rib cage and spine. So from here, I keep my shins where they are. I sit back and down. So notice I'm not way, way low and dumping. I'm, I'm up a little bit so I can work on getting length in my ribs. So I sit back. If you notice, I'm lifting my toes and then relaxing them down, putting my weight in my heels, keeping length, drawing those bandhas, right? The muscles below the belly button above them to engage to support my back shoulders down, I can reach my pinkies up or bring my hands to my heart and breathe here. Your next inhale, get a little longer and then as you exhale, fold over your straight legs. Inhale, lengthen. From here, just step your left leg back. Get a little low. Your left leg comes back and the foot presses down at an angle. This is really challenging if you have tight outer hips. We walk our hands up. For those of you that would rather practice from standing and stepping back, that works too, okay? So I'm taking my feet, like if I had my feet on railroad tracks, hip width apart. Notice I have friends here practicing yoga with me. My, my huskies are locked in because they've been quite um, disruptive this morning. So I brought them friends so I can keep my yoga teacher safe at home. I have representatives, okay. So back to our warrior. If you take a wider stance between your feet this way, it helps you rotate your hips more. So as I step my left foot back and I drop through all four corners, my foot is at an angle, my right knee is bent, my left hip's forward. For those of you that practice regularly, take the time to do a couple sun salutation Bs. From here, I'm drawing both hip points forward, lengthening the torso, reaching the arms up. You can keep them here. This is warrior A. So good for the outer hip, good to prevent what we hear, sciatica. Now as we exhale, we can step up. We can take the hands down and step up to forward fold. Switch, opposite. Oh, it's raining, how nice. We get some rain here. And draw the hip, I should save the animals, hold on. Save the animals from the rain. Okay, I'm taking my feet a little hip width apart, drawing both hips towards the front, getting long, reaching. So good for this hip right here. It's getting all the way down this outer. It's that IT band we talk about that gets really tight, rolling. If you're a runner or you do sports, this is good for that. And then exhale, stepping back up. You're either here or forward fold. Inhale, extend your spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Okay, so we sit back in that fierce pose again, which you know is chair pose. We'll do a couple more rounds like this. So we inhale, drop your hips back, reach your arms up. And as you exhale, we can forward fold or half, depends how you wanna step back. Inhale, extend your spine. Exhale, left comes back. Reach up. Okay, three breaths here, we'll take a couple breaths. Open your back hip. Step back up, however it's comfortable for you. For those of you that are practicing your vinyasas and you're stepping from down dog, that's good too. Step back with your right, bending the left, work both hip points towards the front, hands either at your heart 
before we reach. One more full breath. And step on up to the front of our mat. So we're learning stepping back. Okay? Some of you will continue to practice this stepping back. What I want to teach now is how to step forward from down dog in the same thing. So here we are at the front of our mat. Some of you will stay at the front and work on stepping your left back to warrior A and your right back to warrior A. Inhale, chair pose, fierce pose. Take a few breaths here, no rush. With your next exhale, fold over your straighter legs. Inhale, extend your spine. Exhale, folding, walking your way back, your push-up. Inhale to Cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Now, the key to stepping through is keeping your hips high for room. So as I, you really kind of want to use a little momentum to learn to start doing this. So I lift my right leg high, and in slow motion what I'm doing is as I'm lifting my left heel, and I'm reaching and pulling to step my foot down, okay? If we have tight hips, this is really challenging. So what happens is we get stuck here. No worries, this is how we get out of it. You take your hand around your calf and walk it up a little bit. Then from here, use your hands, find your balance, walk up to your leg, come up to your warrior A. So there's a different way you can enter the pose. Then we exhale, we come back down, step your right foot back, and your push up again. Of course, you can skip your push up and go right to down dog to go to the other side. Just depends what your body wants today, if you want more work or less. If it's a recovery or a workout for you. Now, same other side. The left lifts, and as we exhale, we step through. We use our hand to guide up, back foot down at an angle, inhale, reach your arms up, taking a couple breaths and warrior A. Shoulders relax on, I have to remind myself. Shoulders relax and coming back the same way. So hands, for those of you that are stepping from the front of your mat, you're just gonna step back to forward fold. Knees, exhale, lower. Inhale, back bend. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a few breaths either in forward fold or your down dog or child's pose. Two more breaths. And the front of our mat. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach to stand. Exhale, hands to heart. So now you have the option. We can step back into our poses. We can step from down dog forward into our poses. I will be staying in the front of the mat, stepping back. For those of you that want to take your flow, you can take your flow to get into these poses. From here, your feet are either hip width apart or together. Inhale, sit your hips back, reach. And as you exhale, forward fold over your straighter legs. Inhale, lengthen your spine. As you exhale, bend left foot back, warrior A. So now I'm gonna turn around to show you warrior B. So my right leg's leading, I'm in warrior A. Now, warrior B, we open the hips. So I turn my hip points the long way. 
Most people don't have to change the stance in their feet. My hips are recovering from injuries in the past, so I do change my stance to help. My knees over my heel, my back leg is straight, my hips are towards this way. It's a lot of inner groin and the thigh opening, so if you're feeling it there, you're doing it right. I'm long in my torso. A lot of people tend to lean forward, so we work on leaning back to lengthen both sides. I'm looking over my right fingertips, sinking lower, warrior B. From here, my left hand comes down. I inhale, reach my right arm up. I'm long in my side body here. It's like a reverse warrior, and it's really good to stretch the right ribs. And you want to work on keeping your knee forward, back leg straight. Now triangle pose. We hear about this pose a lot. I'm going to shorten my stance just a little bit. My hips tilt this way. I'm pressing through all four corners. I'm long in both sides of my spine. And as I bring my hand to my shin, I'm working on not sinking. Okay? Turning around. This is what sometimes happens. We come down and we bring the hand to the floor and just take the, the hips out. Don't worry about that. So as you slide down to your triangle, keep lengthening. Reach your top arm, look towards up. Lengthen your spine, your neck, look towards up. Now bring both hands back around your front foot or step back to the front of your mat. Remember I turned around to show you. So you're stepping back to the front of your mat. For those of you that take your vinyasa, take your vinyasa. From here, if you're in your forward fold, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold again. Let's all reach to stand. Exhale, if you're in down dog, you'll meet by stepping left forward. Let's all step our right back from whatever forward fold we're in. Inhale, warrior A. Remember, both hip points are facing the short edge of your mat for this one. Now we open to warrior B, turn, feet, knee, hip points, open, long spine, look over your left fingers, relax your shoulders down, feel your inner thighs or hamstrings. It's kind of like you're drawing that tailbone down again, your hip points up, really opening from sitting this can be challenging. Right hand slides down. We inhale, reach left arm up. Get long through your left side body. Be breathing. Relax your jaw. Sometimes we put tension in our jaw. Straighten your left leg. Hips shift. Keep long in your torso. Think about keeping your right rib cage rolling up as your hand slides to your shin. Some of you might have a block under your hand. And as you get long, look up, breathe. Press through all four corners of both feet. Feel the belly muscles below and above your belly button. Engage them. Tailbone draws down, which is like that way. And slowly step up to the front of your mat. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Reach to stand. Stand to your feet. We'll work on some standing balancing now. For those of you that want to keep flowing, you can put this on pause and do a couple more rounds of that. Let's step back. Depending where you are in space in your four corners of your walls and if you're with your family or alone is where you want to stand. When we stand and do a one-legged balancing pose, you want a spot to be able to stare at in front of you. So if you're not sure where to stare or, or if you, the, the wall in front of you is kind of making you dizzy, come towards the back of your mat so you have somewhere to look, okay? So I'm staring at the front of my mat, kind of in the middle of my mat. And you're not like really staring, you're softening your gaze as you look. 
we have our mountain pose, which is Tadasana. With your feet together or hip width apart. When we do balancing, let's come to hip width apart. Pressing through all four corners, thighs lift the kneecaps, tailbone towards down, hip points up, shoulders back, long torso. Full three part breath back to your belly, your ribs, your shoulders. And feel this calmness in your body from all the movement and breath work so far. Really important for that balance. And I'm going to give you some really good tips to balancing on one foot. So we'll start by grounding through your left foot. Again, all four corners of your foot connect there. Keep your smooth breath. So now we have our spot we're staring at, the connection of our foot, our calm, long, relaxed breath. Those are three key ingredients to successful balance. The next ingredient is the thigh lifting your kneecap without locking so that you have a strong supported base. And the last one I heard from a student years ago is take your tongue softly to the roof of your mouth. So if you wanna try that for your fifth, try that. And from here, start to bring your right knee up. I will turn and face you and mirror you. So you're bringing your right knee up. And if you're feeling wobbly, what you do is you stay in it until you stabilize. So some of you might just lift your right heel. Some of you might lift your whole foot. Some of you might have a chair by you and you use it as you need it, if you need it. Keep your focus, keep your breath. If you've got the knee up and you're wobbling, that's great. That's learning to stabilize. So continue breathing there. Tree pose is taking your foot anywhere on the inside of your opposite leg. So I've tilted my right foot, so my right heel is on the inside of my inner calf shin area. If you want to come higher, bring your foot off the floor, you can. You go anywhere below the kneecap or use your hand to guide above the kneecap, but never on the kneecap. Our hip points are forward, so I'm working towards opening my hip without going and really going crooked, right? So my knee goes this far back and I'm okay with that. I'm working on opening my hips after all the years of spinning, kickboxing. Our bodies tell us stories in yoga. And you can bring your arms wherever you want. Let's release wherever you are. Sometimes it feels good to shake it out. My feet are getting a little chilly from being outside. It's getting a little chilly out, but nothing we can't handle, especially if we're gonna do yoga outside after all this is over. By then it might be warmer out, right? Okay, back on focus. I have to tell myself that. Find your focus point. Ground through your right leg. Lift the kneecap, soft breath, tongue to the roof of your mouth. Take one step at a time, practicing your tree pose, other side. Start to lift your left heel. Lift maybe the whole leg. Wherever you practice the other way, do it on this side. You'll notice one side probably has a little better balance than the other. One side's always more cooperative than the other. It's just the way it is. We don't do a lot of things in life even. We're all right-handed or left-handed for the most part. So yoga brings balance. One of the gifts of being human is having a different left side than right. And release, shake it out a little bit. Let's bring it to the floor. So if you want to take your whole floor to the floor, you can, or just sit to the floor. Actually, let's come to our hands and knees first. So for those of us that aren't used to getting on the floor, you should feel hopefully ready, or you can do this sitting in a chair. And if you're not sure about how to do cat cows from a chair, refer to my relaxation yoga video posted on March 17th, which was yesterday. So coming down, 
spreading my fingers. My knees are back under the hips, long spine. From here, inhale, drop the belly, lift. Exhale, where? Two more, inhaling. Exhale. Two more. These are a great warm up as well. And child's pose, which can be challenging if we're tight in the ankles. So we can sit upward a little bit on the forearms and work on stretching the tops of the feet and eventually bringing your big toes to touch the knees a little wide, sitting way back. Come on up. Let's bring our legs out in front of us. Let's learn how to sit on the floor. The reason why it's so challenging to sit on the floor is most of us have tight hamstrings. So to get your hamstrings out of the way, we bend our knees. If I don't have any props, I simply bend my knees and I flex my feet or I just put my heels down and my feet up. From here, I inhale and reach, just like we did when we were standing, and exhale, folding. I can still forward fold over my legs with my knees bent, letting my head hang. I breathe here. For those of you that have more open hamstrings, you might be here. Let's talk about our upper body. If we're in an active yoga, we want to have an active spine. So I'm keeping my shoulders back. I'm holding the ribs kind of down so that I'm not just dumping into my back. And I'm folding with a straight back. So here's my forward fold today with the body I have today with a straight spine. If this was a yin practice, I would relax and roll my spine. We'll probably do a yin practice tomorrow or the next day. Stay tuned for that. So from here, take an active forward fold. Some of you will bring your hands to your shins. Some of you might wrap your hands around your toes or your feet. Take a few more breaths. Just feeling all of that tight fascia, that connective tissue in your lower back start to open. Your sits bones are where your hamstrings connect. You want to work on pressing those down as you fold forward. Now, take your hands behind you and lift your chest so that you're getting the opposite. And breathe here. I have my chin tucked a little bit. I have my heart lifting, my shoulders rolling back, creating space around the shoulders is always good for us. From here, some floor exercises or stretches, I should say. So I scoot forward and carefully come to my back. First is bridge pose. Bridge pose is a great back bend. You want your heels directly under your knees. So you don't want your heels necessarily all the way into your hips. You want them far enough away so you're not feeling any uncomfortableness when you press up. I'm gonna move my ponytail out of the way. Some of you might have to as well. And I work on squeezing my inner thighs towards each other like one of my dog toys. I can take this and squeeze it so I don't let my knees come out. From here, I press through my heels and I roll my hips up, okay? I'm gonna roll them up just a little bit to start. Shoulders. Work them underneath each other. So notice I'm really trying to get my shoulders underneath to lift my chest, my ribs, and interlace underneath. And as I do that, I press my tailbone up higher. I press through all four corners of my feet and I squeeze my inner thighs towards each other. And this is amazing 
If you sit, don't do what I did and turn your head. Just keep your head straight up. This is so good for your back. It's very energizing. After about five to eight breaths, take your hands out. Come down one vertebrae at a time. Work towards that. Work that mobility in your spine. So take your time to roll down. I'm still not even midway down. Now my middle back's coming down. Now my lower spine. And now I'm fully resting. We'll do that a couple more times. For those of you that are practicing your full upward bow, go for it. For the rest of us, let's do two more. Pressing through your feet, rolling the hips up, shoulders, interlace, or just press down through your hands and lift. Full breaths in this bridge pose. We call it Setu Bandhasana. Think about the bandhas. We talked about the core muscles. We want to use them to support. One more breath here. And let your hips rest down for just about one breath. We don't want to get too cozy because then we don't want to get back up. Let's take our third back bend, which is always an option, right? If you like your supported bridge and you have your block, you can put it underneath your hips for that. Roll on up. Shoulders, keep breathing, keep breathing. Inner thighs. Three more breaths. Carefully roll on down. Beautiful. Okay. Recline butterfly. Soles of your feet together. Knees out. This, if you have really tight inner thighs, can be super, super intense. So if this is intense, one leg, take your left leg straight for tree pose on you. Excuse me, let me get a sip of water. Relaxing here. I'm gonna come and see how long I've been teaching you. And just breathe. This is one of those great yin poses, perfect timing. This is one of those great yin poses that you can hold for two to three minutes. And the reason why we hold for two to three minutes is for the connective tissue. The connective tissue is something they're finding that we need to spend more time working on stretching. Our muscles are what we open and stretch when we're holding a stretch for seconds, right? Maybe five, 10 breaths. To get into our connective tissues, we have to go beyond the muscle and hold for two full minutes. The two minutes helps your mind and your muscles get out of the way. Our mind, we think a lot. My huskies wanna come out here so bad. We think a lot and that can, I'll let them out. I'll let them out just for the last minute of practice. If you are doing tree pose right now and you have your left leg extended, right knee bent, switch. Take the time to switch. For those of you that are still in your reclined butterfly, stay. So we take two minutes to get the connective tissues out of the way. Here they come. And with the two minutes of getting the connective tissues out of the way, or the muscles and the mind out of the way, the connective tissues start to get the work. When the connective tissue get the work, yeah, they can come out for the last minute. I, I let them all know that these huskies were dying to come out, and now that I'm done and just taking them through their yin shape. This is Dakota. We rescued him like seven years ago. So connective tissues are what give us all of our joint pain. Yin yoga is the practice that I've been doing almost every day. That one's Koa. For the past six years since I was diagnosed with adrenal fatigue from too much exercise, my body was a mess and this yin practice is what's healed my joints. I've been doing it probably six times a week. Okay, so I extend my legs out, right? And if my lower back doesn't feel good, I might bend my knees, right? 
and I come down to my back. I wonder who's the warrior in our family, me or him. Uh, so I come down to my back, and I rest with my feet wide and my knees together. That's if your lower back's feeling a little tingly after all the work you've done. If it feels good to let your legs extend, you want them a little bit wide, your arms by your sides or out a little bit, palms up, close your eyes and take as much time as you can practicing stillness and not thinking. You just breathe. If either of those poses are not comfortable for you, roll to your side and rest in a fetal position. You can even put a pillow between your knees. Like I said, if you're in a chair, just sitting back in your chair and resting, take as much time as you can. When you practice not thinking, you're gonna notice you're gonna think a lot. So every time you come to thinking, or you notice a random thought, come back to focusing on your inhales and your exhales. Maybe even think about counting your inhales and exhales. We practiced that yesterday. Or even like a phrase, like I am on your inhale and calm on your exhale. It's kind of like counting sheep. Anything you can do to let your mind practice not thinking. And that just takes practice. We'll do a meditation practice in the next couple weeks as well. Thank you so much for this all levels flow. And I hope to see you in yoga, either in the park on Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. soon or Wednesdays at 6 p.m. in the square, free for the community. Until then, keep checking in on my YouTube channel and I will keep serving you. Namaste.